There are three crucial things for every PC gamer. Your gaming PC, your monitor, and your mouse. All three of these tie together the smoothness, responsiveness and immersion to form your baseline PC gaming experience and directly dictate exactly how good your gameplay will look and feel. Your gaming computer produces those luscious frames per second, with larger amounts feeling much smoother and faster. Heck, in multiplayer titles, more frames a second will genuinely give you a competitive advantage. The monitor, meanwhile, will actually show you these frames, with high refresh rate monitors working in tandem with your computer to deliver that fully next-generation, properly competitive gameplay experience. So both of these are crucial, but they're still a little bit limited without number three, the gaming mouse. And unlike so many of these gaming peripherals that you see listed online, the gaming mouse actually makes a huge difference to your gameplay, and without it, you honestly are going to find yourself at a bit of a disadvantage. So this is exactly why I've teamed up with the kings of gaming mice, Logitech, and proud sponsors of this video, to walk you through all of the ins and outs of everything gaming mouse. The first thing to understand is that it really doesn't take a huge investment to actually get hold of a good one. There are plenty of mice that you can choose from, and even an entry-level gaming mouse, like the Logitech G203, can provide a stellar gaming experience that is leaps and bounds above any horrible included gaming accessories. Let's start with the basics. What exactly is a gaming mouse? It's a good question, and if you've ever had a quick scan on Amazon, you'd be forgiven from thinking it's all about bold designs and RGB lighting. A good gaming mouse is all about the sensor, the chip inside it that works out exactly where you're moving and how fast you're doing it. And there's a few different ways that you can actually do this. The most common one is to use an optical sensor that you find in pretty much every gaming mouse these days. You will find some laser ones, but most use an optical sensor. It's almost a bit like a camera within the bottom of the mouse, and it'll take pictures off the surface that it's on many times a second, and from this it'll work out where you've moved and how fast you've done it, before relaying this information back to the PC. The faster and more accurately that it can do this, the better the sensor. And for high precision tasks like video games, accuracy and speed is the key to getting a great experience. But this is only half the story though, as the mouse also needs to communicate and send the movement data to your computer. We call this process polling, and it's measured in hertz, with one hertz meaning one update per second. A lot of the more bland mice that you can find will report at 500 hertz, which is absolutely fine for desktop use, but for gaming, it's definitely a little bit slow. You're going to want to look for a mouse that has at least 1000 hertz of polling rate for the optimal gaming experience, and just to feel a little bit more connected to your character. Technically speaking, the best sensor and fastest polling rates will of course make for the optimal gaming mouse. But then on the other side of the coin, it is all about the design. And again, not the way that it looks, instead the way that it feels. You're going to be using this device for what, five, six, seven years? So getting one that actually suits your personal playstyle, I guess, and the actual physical shape of your body and hands is really important. I wrote down here tens of thousands of hours, and it's scary when you add it all up, isn't it? Some mice are flat and symmetrical, while others are a lot more sculpted to a specific hand shape. There is no right or wrong choice, but the symmetrical, ambidextrous shape is arguably a safer bet if you're a newcomer to PC gaming, especially if you are left-handed. Mice tend to have different shapes for different purposes. If you primarily play FPS, let's say, then your needs are going to differ from someone that just plays MOBA. It all comes down to two elements, the speed at which you'll be moving the mouse, and then the amount of buttons that are actually embedded into the body. First person games are built around fast, flick based movements, in which a smaller, lighter and largely button free design is definitely easier to chuck around more accurately without feeling fatigued. On the contrary however, larger mice with lots of buttons tend to be used for games where you spend a lot of periods of time maybe slowly moving the mouse, with your hand often resting for large periods of time. Personally speaking, I actually prefer heavier mice for titles maybe like Civilization VI, something that I am genuinely addicted to right now. I'm going to finish this game and take a few months off because honestly I, I need it. And the mouse that I actually use for that isn't even a gaming mouse, it is the MX Master 3. Because it is bigger, it is just a little bit nicer to hold in your hand for longer periods of time. And when you're sitting at your computer for what, like four hours in a single session, don't judge me, 
Things like that are more important than having something that is small, lightweight, that you can flick around. It depends what you're using the mouse for. My advice used to always be to actually try out a few different gaming mice before you settled on one, just to make sure that you're getting something that fits you nicely and that you're happy with both the form factor and the weight. But obviously in this day and age, it's not really an option anymore. Instead, I guess just try to buy one from a retailer that will let you return it if it just doesn't fit the bill. That's the main makeup of what makes a good gaming mouse. But how much should you spend exactly? That was the question right, the title of this video. So here's the answer. Starting at the more wallet-friendly side, you have the G203 LightSync. This nifty little gaming mouse is just the ticket for those of you that are starting your PC journey or just anyone that's after a small, lightweight gaming mouse. It uses the classic six button ambidextrous design and it packs in a gaming grade 8000 DPI sensor, with DPI being a measure of how many pixels of movement the mouse will record per inch of movement. Higher values means that you need to move the mouse less to actually get the same amount of movement on screen. Got that? But please don't go thinking that using a higher DPI is always better, as actually on the contrary, most serious gamers will usually use anything between 400 and 1000. It's all customizable in software, but ultimately it all comes down to your personal taste as well as what you're actually personally playing. And this is a great example of where spending a little bit more on your gaming mouse can come in handy, as well the G203 is an excellent example of a jack of all trade gaming mouse, if you do decide to spend a little bit more, you can pick out something that is more targeted to your individual playstyle. Take the G502. This hugely popular gaming mouse is designed to be more ergonomic, whilst packing in features left, right and centre. You'll get more physical mouse for your money, a higher quality sensor, extra customizable buttons, and then the real party piece, an infinite scroll wheel that actually locks and then unlocks with a simple release. You press the button. Whee! My favourite thing about the G502 is that it actually has a sniper button on the left hand grip and you can use this for lining up precise shots in FPS games, but it's really useful in any application where you want both speed, and then when you need it, precision. If you look really hard at this as well, you'll probably notice that it lacks any wires, because it's wireless. And this definitely used to be a little bit of a widely disputed topic, whether you should go for wired or wireless, but in 2021, pretty much all of the top-end mice are actually wireless anyway. If you want to go for something that is really eSports focused, then obviously there are options that are ridiculously fast. But in terms of difference it will make to you, it's not really going to translate into anything meaningful. Unlike the benefits of wireless, which is that you can actually move your mouse a little bit more free. I don't like having a cable, I don't like bungees or anything like that. Obviously you do need to plug them in to charge them, you can use them in wired mode if you prefer. But I just find that having a cleaner desk and more freedom is more useful for me than having, well, a wired mouse. But again, it's up to you. Personal preference, right? At this price bracket, there are so many different options you could go for. At one end of the spectrum, you have Logitech's G Pro, the small, lightweight mouse that's all about fast-paced titles, while on the other, you have the G604, a mouse that is just as capable as the Pro, but it prioritizes ergonomics, battery life, and a crazy amount of buttons. Again, for people that are playing slower paced games, or those that just want features over nimbleness. Personally speaking, I've gone through a lot of gaming mice in my time. I have the privilege of reviewing them, so I have a lot of options to pick from. And I've gone through quite a few, but my new one that I've been using for the last few months and that I love is from Logitech, unsurprisingly. It is the G Pro Super Light. It is very similar to the G Pro, but it's super light. It takes everything that's great about the Pro, with the top of the line, super accurate 25k hero sensor, but it reduces the weight down even further to a mere 63 grams. Wireless mice tend to be a little bit heavier than their wired counterparts, so quite how Logitech managed to get a wireless mouse to work in this weight, form factor, no holes, is absolutely beyond me. I use this all the time for matches in Apex and Warzone, and honestly, I can't think of a mouse I'd rather use for the job. Once you go wireless, you won't want to go back. Seriously, it is sublime. But don't go thinking that you need to spend an absolute ton on a gaming mouse, because honestly, you really do not. The 203 proves this, I think. It's such an accurate sensor in there that it doesn't really matter what you want to play, it just does the job fantastically well. But there are things out there that are more tailored to what you want to play. So the question really is how often do you play, how much do you have to spend on a gaming mouse, and what is going to work best for you. Like all parts of PC gaming, spending more will get you the very best kit. 
But with gaming mice, once you go above 50, 60 pounds, you start to get a huge amount of features and the very best sensors, so that's probably gonna be the sweet spot for most. Ultimately, it's the shape, feature set, and butter layout, butter. I keep saying butter layout, it's button layout. Ultimately, the shape, feature set, and button layout needs to match your needs. So as always, please do your research before picking one up. I would absolutely love to hear from you on this one though. Which gaming mouse are you using now? Are you in the market for a new one? Have you had one for ages? Are you still rocking, what is it, the G400 from, from many years ago? I think that was my first ever gaming mouse. Let me know down in that comment section below and please upvote other people's answers so we can get a gauge, I guess, for what people are actually using. If you do want to learn a little bit more about any of these gaming mice, including current pricing, then you can, of course, find them linked in the description below with my Amazon affiliate links. Smash that like button if you've enjoyed this video. It honestly helps out so much you really wouldn't believe. Get subscribed to see more of just like this and maybe peruse the end screen for some PC builds or anything else that takes your fancy. Thank you so much for checking it out. I'll see you in the next one. Hope you have a good day.